point three, the next three questions, question number four, five, and six, in quiz number two, the first one. Suppose we want to display one HTML document in our well, web browser. To display this document, is it possible that the browser needs to visit several servers? The key, key part here, several servers to load the resources. Yeah. Here, uh, I want to check if you pay attention to in one of the videos when I explain how the how the browser how the web browser loads a web page containing images containing multiple images yeah so here we consider the situation a web page containing multiple images all right if you understand this part then you can answer this question easily otherwise if you just answer this question based on your intuition you may very likely to miss it because based on your, your intuition one web page then the web browser just loaded from one server that's it right one web page comes from one server that's it how can you say this is several servers right yeah so the problem is about image loading how the images in one web page are loaded yeah you need to understand that part yeah is it possible answer is yes possible yeah. here let me describe the image loading you know procedure yeah all right so we know first the images you put in one web page they are not embedded with the image content in your pages directly it's not the case embed the reason is very simple because if the images are embedded in your web page directly the page size will be very big right very big but actually it's not right so your page size is not very big right yeah for each image your page size only use that hyperlink of the image right yeah. sometimes use hyperlink of the image so not not that big all right yeah so then when the page is loaded how do you see all the pages yeah it's like this all right suppose this is your web page all right yeah. here i only assume you have three images that should be enough right yeah so i m g one yeah uh, in that location i m g two in another location and i m g three yeah let us assume these three images from different servers okay yeah server one server two and a server three how about that different servers yeah all right yeah let me just you know for simplicity server one okay yeah s1 all right then all right so when the web browser renders the whole page first render the page content without images first yeah because that part will be easy right without images all right after that then try to resolve the first image resource 
from its link. All right. So then goes to the server one, get the image resource and load it. Yeah. yeah. So then that part is updated. All right. Then go to the second server and load the image resource and get this part updated. Yeah. Then the third one, third server and get that part updated. So that is the web page loading details containing multiple images. So if you understand this procedure, so then you can answer the question easily. All right, yeah. So that's question number four. Number five, now, which of the following elements is not a block element? Now, first, you need to understand the difference between these two types of elements, block elements and inline elements. All right, yeah. Okay, yeah, inline, yeah. So the element stays in the current line, you know, there is a natural flow, right? Natural flow, following the natural flow, <laughs> you do not change the new line. You, the, the element, the inline element stays in the same line of the flow. Yeah, but the block is not, okay? The block, you have to start at a new, new line. Okay, start a new location, new line. Yeah, so you have to, you know, the the previous flow you have to stop it. Then you start the element at the new line location, the block element. All right. So then div block element. Yeah, div. Yeah, div block element. So. Similar one, there is a span, so you can put block of text in the span element. Yeah, that is this is inline. Yeah, so div and a span. Yeah, yeah, pretty. The usage pretty close. The main difference is this. Yeah, main difference is this. Yeah, so type different image. Yeah, when you see the image element, can you recall, have you seen, have you noticed that some image can be displayed somewhere in the current line? Yeah, so you display, for example, an article. Yeah, in one line, yeah, certain location, you want to put the image icon, right? Image button, image icon. Yeah, so you want to stay in the same line, right? So that means that image icon is an inline element. Yeah. Inline element. So not a block, right? Because it's inline, not block element. Okay. OL order the list block element. When you make a order the list, unorder the list, you have to start a new line. Yeah. New line location. Yeah. So Block, that's block. Li, list each item, you start from a new line, right? Li, block element, also, yeah. All right, so that's question number five. The last question of this video, uh, number six. Which of the following types of CSS style sheets has the highest priority to override other types of CSS style sheets. Highest priority, okay? So that one, if there is some conflict, okay? Or if there is a rule that appear, that appears in three different places, inline place, internal place, and external place, which one takes the proceedings? Yeah. Inline one. To understand that part, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy, yeah. Because the external, you can see external CSS, yeah. Suppose you have an external rule. Uh, suppose rule one, okay. That rule one, usually when we use external CSS file, we apply it to 
uh, web page one, web page two, okay, web page n, okay, yeah. So same rule that can be applied to multiple web pages. Is it efficient? Yeah, so that way, very efficient. You only define that R1 once, then you use use it use it n times. How about that? Very efficient. But think about that. So suppose there is a situation. Yeah. Most of the places you still use the, want to use the original R1 rule, but in one particular, only in one of the n pages, you want to modify that R1 rule uh, slightly. You want to modify it slightly. Okay, yeah. So then you have an option. So you, in the internal part, yeah, so not internal. So what is internal page? Because there is a script tag, right? Yeah. In that script element. Script element. You redefine that R1 rule. R1 rule. Okay, redefine it. Okay. So now there is some conflict. Yeah. So now the internal one overrides the external R1 rule. Yeah. So then another situation, yep. Yeah. Because when you use the internal, it is defined on top part, header part of the page usually. Yeah, header part. Yeah. Still, so that location. Yeah. The rule you define there, the the rules you define in that portion will be used in the whole page, right? The whole page, yeah. All right, several places, many places, the whole page. All right, so then you can think about within that page, you can use the general rule, all the places except one particular location. Yeah, suppose you have one line one particular location, you want to modify only one local place. You don't want to modify all the places. If you want to mo modify all the places, you just change change here, okay? Yeah. Then you modify everywhere. Okay. But all the other places are fine, but this place you want to change. How about that? When you change, then you do the inline change. You just change right here, and this change will override all other places defined, either in the internal place and external place. So that is the natural logic natural logic yeah because sometimes it is very hard to memorize all these rules right yeah very hard yeah what's that what's that rule so you need to search you know notes web search many places you know but sometimes it will be easier if you understand the logic so then you just use some you know logical reasoning so you can get an answer yeah. all right so that's all the three questions for this video deep on three